guys, welcome back to Cruising As Crew. My name is Lucy and today we are going to talk about what your outgoings are going to be as a crew member working and living on board a cruise ship. Like, you don't have to pay rent, you don't have to pay for a commute, so like, you must just save all of your money. Um, I really wish that was the case and it was as easy as it looks like from the outside, um, but as is the case with many things, it's not as easy as everyone thinks it is to just save all of your money because there are a few things that you do need to pay for as a crew member. Um, so I'm going to go through what those things are and also the things that you may assume that you have to pay for that you don't have to pay for. Alright, so the first thing that you have to pay for, which I have mentioned many times before, is internet. And internet on board cruise ships is very costly because it's costly for the cruise lines to be able to offer internet access on board because they need a satellite and a lot of other things that I honestly have no idea about. Maybe I should find out. Anyway, internet can be anywhere from like $10 to $200. So I remember on P&O um, there would be a social media package. So it was, f I would pay £15 a month for that and that would give me access to Instagram, Facebook, and WhatsApp, not YouTube, like I couldn't watch any videos. If there was a reel on Instagram, I wouldn't be able to load it. I would just be able to like scroll pictures on Instagram and also send messages, you know, to friends and family back home. And like I said, that was £15 a month, which after speaking to people who've worked for other cruise lines, it was actually quite cheap. Um, on Royal Caribbean, I remember I used to get like a 500 minute package Oh, how much was it? I think the 500 minute package was $50. But actually, if any of you watching are working on Royal Caribbean or have done recently, um, let me know in the comments what the internet packages are and how much they cost. Um, but I spoke to someone yesterday actually and we were talking about internet and they said on Celebrity there was a, I've written it down, there was a 2,500 minute package which is basically two days if you left it on for 20, uh, 48 hours that is 200 2500 minutes um, and that was 200 dollars so the thing is with these like minute packages it happened to me a few times on royal like if you logged on and you're doing your stuff and then you get distracted and you forget to log out and you let's say log back in five hours later it's like oh so I've basically just wasted all that money because it just, it run, it keeps running until you log out. So it's kind of a pain in the ass. Um, but yeah, internet is something huge that you will have to pay for. So the friend I was speaking to yesterday about internet was saying that he was in a long distance relationship when he works on another cruise line and he was spending about a thousand dollars a month just on internet to be able to speak to his girlfriend. Although you might not have many outgoings regarding like rent, food, all of that, internet is a huge, huge drain on your money. If you have to use the ship's Wi-Fi, like because my job allows me to get off most days, if I had to buy Wi-Fi on here, I just, I probably wouldn't buy much and I would just go to an internet cafe when I got off because it works out so much cheaper to do that and buy a coffee so you can use their internet, then, like, it adds up. That is the first thing that you will have to buy, and that is the thing that will probably take up most of your money. The second thing is crew bar. So, as we all know by this point, us crew members do like to have a cheeky drink in the bar, let loose after a long, long day of work, and although crew bar is notorious for offering cheap drinks like you can get a gin and tonic for maybe one pound fifty or a vodka and coke for two dollars basically it's a lot cheaper than any bar that you would ever find on land but depending on how often you go obviously depends on how expensive it is because when i speak to my friends at home they go to the pub i don't know like at the end of the week I for the weekend so although they might be buying more expensive drinks than i am at crew bar they're only doing that once a week whereas days of the week aren't really relevant on board cruise ships you kind of go by sea day port day embarkation day which means that you can go to crew bar almost every night generally not before a sea day 
but some people do and if you are doing that every single night then yeah it's going to add up and before you know it you are going to be spending maybe 200 a month on just alcohol I you know I did it on my first contract I absolutely rinsed my paycheck and it was all on alcohol because which was funny actually because I wasn't legally allowed to drink but because I was 19 and I went on my first contract and I was on an American ship so you have to be 21 to drink but it's all about the crew mafia it's all about making friends in the right places and I certainly did that so I was able to get my hands on the booze and yeah and I paid the price quite literally because I didn't come home with much money so crew bar and alcohol is going to be maybe a big outgoing for you depending on how sensible you are and also depending on the on the ship you're on so I'm on Valiant at the moment and crew bar isn't that lively we have crew parties every once in a while but it's just not as busy as other cruise ships whereas when I was on P&O Oceana on one of my contracts the crew bar would be full every single night everyone went to the crew bar from every department every night pretty much so it didn't matter like if no one from my shops team was going to the bar I knew that I could go to the bar and there would be someone there that I could sit with and have a drink with that I knew um, whereas on here it's just not that not that way really like you maybe you go to the bar and there's two or three people sat in there having just a beer after they finish their shift but crew bar is not as popping on here maybe it's to do with the covid restrictions and stuff like that everyone's trying to be sensible but yeah i mean it's good for me because i'm saving money in that respect so but crew bar is something to be aware of um because it's, it's that thing, it's like, oh, what's $1.50? What's $2.50? It's fine. But obviously, if you do that every night, it adds up. Number three, restaurants. So if you are lucky enough to have deck privileges, you will be able to eat in some of the fancy restaurants on board whatever cruise ship you are on. Um, but there is usually a surcharge for this. And as a crew member, it will be discounted. So you will pay a lot less than what guests would pay. But you will still have to pay. So I think on P&O, if I went to Cafe Jardin or something like that, it would be $7. Which, again, for a three-course meal, $7 is... I mean, it's fine. But it adds up if you do it a lot and the same on Royal Caribbean I think it was like maybe ten dollars to eat at like the steakhouse or Giovanni's the Italian or something like that but obviously the food in the mess is free of charge so you only have to pay for restaurants and you will not be eating in restaurants very often I don't think so that's not something really to worry about or stress about because you're it's fine to treat yourself to an evening meal out once in a while um, but but just to let you know on most cruise lines not on virgin voyages but on most cruise lines you will have to pay an extra fee to go to one of the restaurants number four is coffee the thing that is just my kryptonite is that the right word maybe I don't know as you know if you've been watching my videos for a while on my last contract on the scarlet lady I spent an obscene amount of money on coffee um which makes me really sad but we've learned from it because you know we're still doing quite well i'm like four months hang on what february march april may june july february march april may june july. okay so i'm like five and a half months into my contract now that's gone super fast and I haven't been to Grounds Club that much. Like, I haven't paid for coffee that much because we do have free coffee in the mess. I'm not going to lie, on most cruise lines, the coffee that is on offer in the mess is absolute dog shit. But the coffee on here that is offered in the mess is exactly the same as you can buy in Grounds Club. So that's why I was so pissed off at myself for spending so much money last contract on it. Because I'm like, I could literally get the same thing for free. But anyway, as I said, if you do like coffee, you will spend money on coffee because there isn't good free coffee available on most cruise lines, especially for crew. Even for passengers, like if you opt for the free coffee that is in the buffet or something, it's usually shit because they want you to buy the nice coffee. So yeah, 
coffee is something that you will spend your money on especially if you are a fancy bitch and you like your syrups and your frothy coffees then yeah number five is water which sounds absolutely ludicrous but yeah we used to have to buy water so on Royal Caribbean and P&O so you would have water day once a week where basically the ship would get a delivery of thousands of plastic bottles of water uh, like this actually oh don't hate me I was I was outside and I thought I was gonna die of thirst so you know needs must but anyway on Royal Caribbean and P&O and other cruise lines we would have water day where you would basically buy a pack of six of these uh, water bottles I would actually buy 12 and they were like 150 each so it would be three dollars and you'd you and your roommate would probably buy two packs of six each and you'd have them stacked up in your cabin which I mean the cabins are small anyway so to then have like loads of water bottles taking up space it wasn't ideal and of course all the plastic that you are using it was awful so it's not much money that you will spend on water however you are going to have to buy it because you can't drink from the taps you're not allowed to drink from the well you can it's not going to kill you but I wouldn't make I wouldn't be doing it regularly if I was you. Um, but hopefully more cruise lines are going to do what Virgin have done and just encourage every crew member to get a water bottle and then they're going to have water stations around the ship so you can just reuse a water bottle instead of constantly having these shitty plastic bottles on board. Um, there's, just, there's just no benefit to having that. But anyway, um, so that's the fifth thing, water. So those are the five main things that you are going to have to pay for when you work on board a cruise ship. Now I'll go through some things that people think they'll have to pay for that actually are free. First one, the gym. You don't have to pay a gym membership. Um, there's no fee to use the gym. Uh, there is a crew gym and there is a passenger gym and it depends on the cruise line. It depends on your rank, whether you can use the passenger gym. But to be honest, like... I shouldn't say this but even if you can't like even if you're even if you don't have the privilege to use the gym like just give it a go like just do it until you get told off and if someone says hey you can't be up here just say oh my god I'm so sorry I didn't know just play stupid um but yeah give it a go because the guest gym is always going to be nicer than the crew gym in my opinion but yeah if you go at quiet times as well then I, I doubt anyone's gonna say anything again classes so the fitness instructors offer classes for passengers as a crew member you can attend these classes again if you have guest privileges but they're probably not going to say anything so just give it a go um yeah but you don't have to pay whereas the passengers do have to pay but especially if these classes are quiet sometimes the fitness instructors like crew members to be there because it makes it look like they're busier than they are um so yeah just befriend the fitness instructors and I'm sure they'll be happy for you to attend the fitness classes which you won't have to pay for. Uh, laundry, you don't have to put money in the laundry machines, they are free of charge. You will have to purchase like laundry pods, washing detergent, everything like that. However, to actually use the machines, you do not need to put money in them. They are completely free of charge. Having your uniform pressed and like washed is free. Obviously, they're not going to wash your normal clothes but because it's your uniform most cruise lines offer a service where um, you can get your uniform uh, cleaned and ironed however on some cruise lines there's you they are like you're required to tip um, but it just depends it just depends on the person it depends on the cruise line and kind of what's going on on that ship but usually it should be free of charge yeah so those are the five things that you need to pay for and then some things that you might think you do but you don't so i hope you have enjoyed that video guys if you have then please let me know in the comments and leave a like and please press subscribe i hope you have a fabulous rest of the day whatever you decide to do and as always i will see you in the next video bye guys